<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. All initiation is self initiation. As one of my Facebook friends posted uh, a comment uh, yesterday or the day before, even if you had Buddha sitting right beside you, you'd still have to wake up yourself. And that is absolutely true. Now, I, I'm an initiate of uh, uh, several, you know, very uh, wonderful initiatory societies, and including uh, the Freemasons and uh, Ordo Templi Orientis and various Golden Dawnish kind of uh, kind of things, and and the experience is absolutely wonderful and and completely magical. But the initiatory experience is a private thing, and no matter how many helpers that you have uh, around you, well trained initiator uh, initiating officers you have to do the real work yourself. You have to wake up yourself. I'm getting ready later this uh, uh, month to once again uh, uh, go through a series of initiations, Kabbalah initiations related to uh, uh, the Hermetic Kabbalah that I uh, did first in uh, Beijing, China, over a one-year period. I would return every uh, every uh, 90 days. Uh, and when I returned from China, I, uh, I put those initiations and the knowledge lectures and the, the, all the paraphernalia uh, into uh, into a book called Son of Chicken Kabbalah. That's what Son of Chicken Kabbalah is about. And of course, I formatted it uh, uh, to be as uh, painless as possible with my uh, uh, pseudepigraphic Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford as my uh, as my spokesperson. The title is uh, uh, The Son of Chicken Kabbalah, Rabbi Lamad Ben Clifford's Mostly Painless Practical Kabbalah Course. Uh, it's meant to be a handbook of self-initiation. And the title actually says it all. It's a new manual of Kabbalistic initiation ceremonies teachings, exercises, and practical meditations created expressly for dilettantes with really short attention spans who pretentiously consider themselves hermetic Kabbalists, but who nevertheless sincerely desire to apply a tiny portion of the Hebrew Kabbalah for spiritual enlightenment. Is that you? Then, friends, if that's you, then you need this book. Or maybe not. Anyway, I am moved this morning to read you the welcoming lecture that takes place after the first degree initiation ceremonies. Now, usually most initiatory uh, societies uh, uh, are formatted that way. You uh, you go in pretty pretty raw and ignorant and blind, and then uh, they put you through an uh, initiation ceremony. Usually blindfold you and stuff like that, and you take a bunch of oaths and and um, and you don't know why the hell am I doing all of this? And then they put you through sort of a an adventure 
of some kind and it confuses you and it, it embarrasses you and it uh, uh, you, you're not sure why it's all going on. But whatever it is that's going on, whatever it is they're putting you through is mildly traumatizing. And trauma and emotional roller coaster experiences tend to mutate you on a very, very fundamental level. Uh, when you go through something uncomfortable, it feels so good when it stops. And you feel so embarrassed, uh, perhaps that you're so afraid and it it uh, buries that experience deep in you. And if that experience is well constructed, it is affecting good changes, rebalancing changes uh, in your in your psyche. It, it gives you sort of a a wonderful spiritual enema. <laughs> Is that the right word? I don't know. No. <laughs> but anyway, forget I said that. Well, it's sort of like that. Though. It's more like shock therapy. <laughs> but anyway, here's the, the welcoming lecture, and I thought you would enjoy it. Uh, whether or not you ever get this, the chicken Kabbalah or attend one of these uh, uh, publicly mounted uh, uh, initiation ceremonies like it has been done not only in Beijing but uh, uh, right here in, in Sacramento a, a few years ago. And I think they're I'm getting letters from other people that are using this as a, as a handbook and the scripts for officers to actually uh, put themselves and their friends <laughs> through these ceremonies, but it's mostly intended for you to read personally, privately, and put yourself through these. Anyway, here's the opening lecture after the, the first initiation ceremony. Dear friends and comrades, I comment you on your steadfast willingness to undergo the confusion and the discomforts which you have cheerfully endured so far. I assure you it is not our object or objective to embarrass you with childish ordeals or torment you with make-believe horrors. Rather, it's our intention to offer you experiences designed to fundamentally and profoundly modify your psyche so that you may grow more perfectly attuned to the fundamental harmonies of creation. Our holy order has no name. We do not claim to be an ancient and formal mystery school with thousands of members around the world. Rather, we meet and work only when and where our dreams intersect. In truth, you are the only member of our holy order. You are the honored teacher. You are the worthy guide. You are the temple and you are the teachings. You are the shrine and you are the God within the shrine. For the moment, however, you are not yet awake enough to realize that the words I speak are true. So for the time being, simply continue to embrace your role in a dream in which you are the newest initiated member of our holy order, a modern mystery school created just for you. I caution you, however, do not misjudge the underlying motives of our pleasant and casual approach to the subject of Kabbalah. 
do not think that just because we laugh and take playful delight in our labor that we are not a real initiatory society engaged in serious work on a cosmic scale. Painless and undemanding as your experience today has been, you are, even now, undergoing true and profound initiation. This is not something we are doing to you. Rather, it is something you are doing to yourself. You have willfully placed your foot upon the path, and by doing so, you have triggered an unstoppable chain of events. Nothing in heaven or earth can now prevent you from arriving inevitably at your destination. In the past, mystery schools and initiatory orders operated as secret societies, whose members were bound by terrible oaths to be obedient to superiors of the order and sworn to secrecy as to the nature of the work. Perhaps in the past there were good reasons for such obedience and secrecy. But our holy order will never demand any such promises from you. At each step of your initiatory career, your only oath shall be to yourself and yourself alone. A pledge to awaken. A pledge to become truly self-aware. Kabbalah teaches that each one of us is the perfect image of God. When we come to full realization of who we are when we wake up, we will realize that we are not merely the image of God, we are in essence God. This is why in ceremonies in the ceremonies you just experienced, you were introduced as Yah. Y A H, the, the God name. One of the many names for the supreme singularity of being. From your studies, you will recall that Yah is the special name of God spoken of in the opening verse of the Sefer Yed Zaira, the God that initiates the opening sequence of creation by means of ten numbers and twenty-two letters. But at the moment, as we will repeatedly remind you, you are not awake to the your true divine nature. You are asleep and dreaming you are in a dream, inside a dream, inside of many other dreams. I cannot wake you up. Worthy guide cannot wake you up. Kabbalah can't wake you up. Death cannot wake you up. Reincarnation cannot wake you up. Only when you open your heart and mind, only when you begin the process of tuning up the sleep-rusted moving parts of your soul, only when you lubricate your consciousness with the anointing oil of, or of the orderly madness that is Kabbalah, will you begin again, to think like God. No matter how much we try to teach you, we cannot teach you how to think like God. No matter how long and hard you study, you cannot study how to think like God. You can only remember how to think like God. My Kabbalah is not, nor will ever be, your Kabbalah, and you will proceed in your work in your own unique way. Each of us 
slumber and dream our own particular dream. So each of us must awaken in our own particular way. If you are seriously attracted to Kabbalah, you will in the coming months and years collect and read scores of books about Kabbalah. We will, of course, recommend those texts which will initially be most helpful to your ongoing self-education. But all these reference works will be meaningless to you unless you have first started the process of remembering how to think like God. That is the purpose of our holy order. And that's all we promise to offer you. I now ask you, do you accept this promise and wish to continue? Well, hopefully there was a lot of yeses there. At each step of the process, it is you who must make the first move. Are you ready to begin? Are you ready to take the great oath to yourself right now? Very well. Please stand up and give the first degree sign. That's always part of the initiatory thing. You got signs and grips and words and things like that. And say after me, I solemnly and sincerely promise myself that I will awaken to the true essence of my being. I solemnly and sincerely promise myself that I will awaken to the true essence of my being. Thank you. Be seated. And that's where we're going to uh, to end this uh, today. Uh, Thursday, we've we've got things uh, that we're going to be doing, actually doing stuff this weekend uh, or this week. Besides uh, all my other zoom lectures and things like that constance and i are going to be hosting a uh like a like a walk through uh, a discussion concern about the gnostic mass and we're, we're setting up our our backyard with uh with boxes and things like that to to uh, to uh, show the landmarks of a gnostic mass temple and we're going to have a few of the local uh, uh, magical people come over for a morning. Uh, uh, I guess it'd be a morning workshop in our in our backyard. We're doing it in the morning because it gets to be a, it, it'll be 113 or something like this uh, uh, in the afternoon. But the mornings are just absolutely beautiful and pleasant, or they have been lately. So we're going to be doing that, and then there's a 418 Lodge, uh, 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 just general officers and and uh, guests, and we're going to meet down at the at uh, uh, McKinley Park on, uh, I guess tomorrow night. Yes, just for an informal thing. So we've got fun things to do. We haven't been doing much. Uh, in the last year since we came to Sacramento and, and uh, even though Sacramento is, uh, uh, has now gone into a, a, a more serious mask mandate thing because of the high levels of contagion uh, here, uh, we're going to be doing stuff outside and, and uh, we're trying to be normal. But we never were normal now that we think of it and so uh, let's just call all of this Interesting. 
and try not to view it as depressing. Anyway, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.